So it's the worst week in about three months across the board. Let's get to Bob Pisani. Hey, Bob. Hello, guys. Happy Friday. Uh, lousy open. Two to one, declining to advancing stocks. Remember, it's the last day of the month. As goes January, we'll see. We're right on the knife edge on this. Take a look at the sectors. Uh, banks were the only major group that kind of opened uh, in the green, and they are also negative as well. But China, which has had a great month, that's MCHI, the big China ETF. Uh, energy's had a great month, but down's been declining for a few days here. Consumer staples, they're the loser on the month. Uh, tech's done very, very well down today. As you can see, uh, all the mega caps are to the downside. The earnings still matter, and they've generally come in very good. You mentioned Caterpillar. Those numbers were good, but they're not going up. Stocks haven't been going up. Many of these stocks just don't go up on good earnings. Honeywell was good. I think the earning, the guidance was a tad disappointing. I think the street was expecting a little more. Uh, Chevron was one of the few stocks that actually had a disappointing uh, uh, top line number uh, for that, but perhaps not that surprising here. As for the shorts, we've been showing you all the heavily shorted names here have been uh, soaring here in the different levels. Uh, it's been quite a week here, but Bed, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, Express, even uh, iRobot, one of the few that was a favorite earlier in the week, not doing anything. Just want to hear some numbers on GameStop. So at the open, uh, it was market cap was about twenty six billion dollars. That's bigger than almost 50 percent of the rest of the S&P 500. It's not in the S&P 500. It's in the S&P small cap. And it's the biggest stock in the S&P <clears throat> small cap. And depending on where it is now, it may be the second largest stock in the Russell 2000. I believe Plug Power is the largest stock in the Russell 2000. This is now number two. But this gives you an idea that this was a stock that was a fraction of this value just one week ago. We care about it today because of the options, the weekly options. Now, these started on individual stocks several years ago. They're generally weekly options expiration, non-events. We never talk about it. It may be an issue today because game stock calls are so deep in the money. We're talking about a $40 stock. Last week, that's 300. We don't know how it's going to end at the end of the day. So investors have to take delivery or sell. Those who are long it, who, who bought the calls, have to take delivery or sell. So if you're long, you bought the call, uh, do you have the money to get delivery? You still have to pay for the stock uh, for whatever, uh, whatever strike price you had there. Uh, and if you're short, you know, if you sold the call, so you're going to be able to borrow the shares to deliver. And again, normally this is not an issue. It, it never comes up. But when you're dealing with these kinds of crazy price swings today, that's an issue. And this came up with that whole clearing issue around, uh, around Robinhood as well, of course. So we've got to keep an eye on all of that. As for the month, well, you know, remember, as goes January, that's an old saying. We're right on the knife edge. Essentially, the S&P 500 is flat. This was at the open up 0.8%. We're now flat for the month. Uh, but the Russell still had a great month, even though it's off of the highs. The Nasdaq uh, is off of its highs, but it's still a good month. Uh, flat on the industrials and the transports down 0.8 percent. As for the sectors, uh, the biggest best performing uh, global index still remains uh, China, although it was down overnight. Um, still good. Energy, banks, technology and consumer staples and utilities, the defensive sectors. They're the ones that really had a tough time right from the get go. They never really had any juice at all uh, behind them. So it's been a fascinating close to the month. We'll see how the day ends up. Guys. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.